Okay, so our head model is now done and looking at the, the reference pictures in our background we can see that it actually lines up pretty well and it looks pretty good and you can also tell this exaggerates how bad my sketch was but it was good enough to get us going and the next thing we want to do is to start creating our body. Now looking in the side view I'm just going to have a quick look and see what I'm doing. I think the body is actually going to be kind of from the side view symmetrical as well as from the front so although this seems to bulge out towards the, the back and the lower part I think well, this will actually be reasonably symmetrical. We might also put in just some kind of temporary arms for now just to help us work because we've got the indents that the arms can recess into uh, when we're animating if we should please if that's kind of what we want to do. So I think what we might want to do is just add the trackball first uh, just so we've got a kind of a, a position for us to work on and that's going to be centered on the, the Y axis. So let's go ahead and do that straight away. We'll just add a sphere to the scene reduce the size down and just lower that down to about so. I think that's pretty good for now we can leave that there let's just go into object mode and we'll just reduce this this is almost minus 200 so let's just make that minus 200 just for the sake of ease of use and then we know that when the, the model is finished and we're not using the reference images anymore we can use this as our reference point for the whole model as our kind of singular axis point for the model and we could just bump that up to 200 and we'll be on the ground plane so that when we put this object into a scene uh, ready for rendering then it will sit on the floor just right. So how are we going to build the body? Let's look at what we need to do. In the side view we can see here we've got this kind of rounded edge and it tapers off more towards the top uh, than the bottom and let's just go into our front view and have a look again fairly similar so I think what we might actually do is use a cube and we'll do some uh, some refining of the cube we'll make the the recesses for the arms and we've also got some hidden geometry in here which you've probably seen in the turntable video where on the front of the the chest area there's a, a, a section that peels back in a similar method to what we've got on the head for the aerial uh, although it's a different deformer we're actually going to use for that we'll use a bender former to curl that but it's it's kind of hidden in the same way as in the front of that panel is perfectly flat lies against the same kind of plane as the chest so I think the first thing to do is to drop a cube into the scene and in the side view we'll just drop that down so the bottom sits reasonably close to the bottom and the top sits about the right level as well that's looking about right there also the front and back just uh, by pure chance also sits in the right place in the front view let's go in and just reduce the size of this in the x-axis so we'll reduce this down we'll go for kind of the widest point and I'm actually going to use this left widest point here because my sketch isn't quite perfect uh, as always okay so I'm happy with that and I'm now going to go into my perspective view just to see what I'm what I'm going to be doing next now I'm going to use uh, taper deformers again I think to, to create the two different sloping aspects to this model so I need to make this model editable and just flipping back into my different views again I've got my seam runs around here so I'm just going to go into polygon mode select my knife tool with the K key and make sure I'm in loop mode which I am that's fine there and I'm going to use my side viewport to place a cut around this seam here that you can see I've drawn on and I'm going to do that there so that's about 26% of the way up the side of that model. Okay, so I can either do this using deformers and uh, using or using hypernerbs and then kind of changing the geometry in place. So let's let's start off doing it the hypernerbs way and just see what we've got and see work out which way is the best. Now I'm not convinced that using hypernerbs is going to be the way ahead. But it might be so I'm going to progress using this method and I might use a, a taper object just to uh, tidy things up afterwards. Now the grid that we've got here the world grid the working grid here is also getting in our way so I'm going to go to filter and just uncheck grid so that's uh, moved out of our way and what I need to do is similar to the head I need to just tighten up some of the edges here so I'm going to go back into my loop mode and in the knife tool that is and I'm going to make a cut at this point I'm going to do the same over the other side 
and you can see already we've tightened up here. I'm also going to make an extra cut across the waist or around the waist and I think also to do the same just across the front and the back. So we've now got a, a, a cuboid shape. I'm also going to add one around the top and the bottom as well actually just for neatness sake. So we've got a cube now but what we really want to do is have this tapering in. So there's different ways of doing this. We could either just go into our selection tool, our live selection tool, and I'm just going to hit UY to expand that selection. Uh, actually, I want to grab these corners as well. I'm just going to hold shift down to select them too. Just rotate myself around, grab that one. And UY again, just to grab the next ones down. And I could just use the T key to scale these in. But the problem we've got here, let's just go into our side view. Even though we're kind of getting to the right, right kind of state here, is that we've got a very flat edge to the front and also to the sides as well. So maybe this wasn't the best way of doing it. Um, and we, we could do the same with the, the bottom there as well. But I'm going to just undo that. I'm going to drop my selection, go into the knife tool. I'm going to make a cut around the middle. And we'll just try again. Uh, in fact, to just make selection easier, I'm just going to use my marquee selection with only select visible elements unchecked. Grab that top there. And try doing it this way. Now this, because of the, the, the way hypernerves work, smoothing out and interpolating between two different edges, this does smooth things off for us slightly, but it's still possibly not quite the way we want it. So I think we will go back. I'm going to keep those cuts where they are, but now I'm going to add a taper deformer. But I wanted to show you just that there's different methods of doing it. And we could have used the, the, the modeling method that I was using there just by moving points and polys around. Um, but I think this won't be actually quicker. So I'm just going to up the strength. If I go into my side view, I can reposition this. That's the E key for the move tool. And I'll drop this onto the waist somewhere. And if I select the taper down here in the attributes manager, I can change the size and everything, uh, which I will do. I'll just decrease that a little bit. And you can see how I've just, using the strength control, I'm just making this curve match my drawing as much as I can. And I think that's actually following it pretty closely. So I'm now going to drop this onto the cube to make it active and that will actually now be affecting the cube as it's a child. And you can see we've got a very similar shape, but it's had a very nice smooth fall off. And you can also see that because the mode is set to limited, it's not affecting anything outside of the box. But what I can do is just control drag that out and I'm going to rotate it around 180 degrees. So that's the R key for rotate and shift to constrain to five degree increments, just so I know that it's exactly opposite uh, and that's what I want. I could also type this in down here but it's just quicker to hold the shift key. I'm going to go back into my side view and drag this down again. I'm going to line this up with the, the track ball which is what I'm calling the, the ball that he rolls around on. Select the taper object again and this one wants to be a lot shorter in the y-axis and possibly shorter in, in all three axes actually. I might uh, just adjust this slightly move that over so I can get to my sliders. Let's have a look in the front view. I want this to be mm, probably about there. Let's drop it in as well underneath the first taper object and see what we get. Okay that's not too bad. I might increase the strength just a little. Let's have a look in our perspective viewport. That actually looks pretty good. Okay, now we're going to have to do some rejigging of some of this geometry possibly uh, when we come into adding the, the sockets for the arms. And I think we might well do that now. So let's go into polygon mode. I'm going to leave the hypernerbs on just because I want to see how this is going to be affecting the, the, the mesh. Okay, so I've got this polygon here and this polygon here which I'm probably going to use as the, the, the ones with the, the recess in. I want to keep that flat edge at the top. And that's because if we just look at this, the, the concept sketch here, I'm just moving over in the side view so I can see what I drew. 
I've actually got the indent is kind of doesn't reach all the way to the top so rather than being a kind of a slot all the way down it's actually a, a, an indent in just the side with the, the rest of the body showing all the way around it so let's have a look at how we're going to do that now in fact I know that these tapers are, are pretty good I know they're pretty much where I want them so what I might actually do is just take the cube and both the tapers right click and I'm going to go down to current state to object like so which means I can delete the two tapers and the cube because I've already got this cube here and it's already under the hyperherbs which I shall just call body for now and that sphere which I'm going to drop underneath I'm going to rename trackball and I'm also at this point now I've got the body where I want it I'm just going to go to save incremental okay so we've got that saved and we can now move on now if we look with anything with, with everything unselected here at the polygons that make up our body we can see that we, even though we could we could make this hypernerbs into an editable object and just give ourselves a few more polygons to work on we will need to just reshape them slightly because the arms are going to be kind of parallel at front and back they're not going to taper off like this although for your own design you can do that without any problems in fact that would actually be easier but there's uh, no point taking the easy option if we don't need to just for the sake of you know a few minutes work so let's select our body and we are going to make this editable now I don't think we need to worry too much about uh, any more smoothing I'm also just going to knock the subdivision renderer down to two because sometimes for some reason that will make the editable version the same as the renderer not the editor so hit the C key we've now got our editable body I'm just going to delete that null that it created because I don't need it and rename the cube to body and I'm going to be swapping around between two sides because I'm going to do both of these at the same time um, but what will make selection just a bit easier is by doing this in the side view and I'm just going to zoom this in a bit and I'm going to use my live selection with visible elements unchecked because I want to be able to select right the way through but what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to be selecting the points along here and then the same at the back and I'm just going to be kind of stretching them out along the Z axis so that even though they stay flat to each other and to the side of the body I want them to be straight up and then straight back down again so I'm going to grab these ones here just to above the waist maybe the next row down as well like so and I'm going to grab the row which will be at the back of the arm like so hit the T key and then just using the the Z axis here I'm going to stretch them down possibly out a little bit more actually and then I'm going to uncheck or unselect these top two now what I've done is I've lined up the top two to the size that I want actually I might go a touch wider to about there and so I'm going to deselect use a spacebar to drop the scale tool control deselect those four points don't forget that's four points not two because I've got these two here on this side but I've also just hold the alt key down flip round to there I've also got the two on the other side so back into the side view again and T key I'm just going to drag these across until they're straight spacebar to go back to selection and control deselect those ones T key and then I'm just going to work my way down the body doing the same thing again so just deselect those T back in stretch them down spacebar deselect scale in the z-axis again now there are some plugins that make doing this kind of thing much easier but really I don't think it's necessary uh, it doesn't take all that long to do this by hand so I'm just going to do that myself manually now like so one more one more time just bring them in spacebar control T select and then bring in those final ones like so okay so now if we go into our perspective view 
you can see that we've got these two sets of polygons here one on this side and one on this side and I'm going to do exactly the same kind of thing selection wise I'm going to select in my side view but in polygon mode this time just so I get both sides at the same time and the reason I'm doing that is just because when I'm doing any extruding or in extruding I know that the values will be the same on each side and because of the the way normals work even if I was to extrude to the left here then I know that it would actually go to what would effectively be if I was in the right hand view or the left hand view would be to the right so it will do them automatically because all of the polygons all of the normals when you select a polygon it's just go closer to it you'll usually have uh, you won't see it here actually because I've got these ones down here because of the the selection method I've got but you'll have a normal and that's the kind of a line that points out of your polygon and that shows you which direction they're facing now, it is a, it is possible to occasionally slip up and get them facing the wrong way um, and if that happens I'll show you how to how to get out of it it's very simple okay but anyway so all the polygons are facing the right way which means that I can do both sides at once that's what I'm getting at okay so life selection polygon and I'm selecting those two rows which will be the recess for the arms now let's just go into perspective view to do this so we get a better idea of the depth we're working to what I want to do is use the inner extrude tool which is our uh, shift D if you remember or our icon we added here and I want to keep preserve groups on because I want these to all be indented as one piece and I'm just going to just bring them in not too much just a little bit that's actually about one and a half centimeters now I'm going to go into my front view and these white lines here that's the 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 face face is normal or the polygons normal so they're all pointing outwards that's what I was talking about earlier okay so I want to go into my scale tool scale tool even so T key and I want to bring these in just a bit and this is similar to what we've done before this is just making a bit of a bevel on those edges just to keep it all kind of looking nice and smooth and I'm happy with that so D key and I'm just going to extrude these inwards not too far only to about there and I'm going to do one more just in case we do just smoothing pass just to tighten that up so I'm going to hit the space key and then click off the object just to, to drop it so we can see what we've got okay so we've got that there now and what I also want to do is although you can't see in the sketches and it would be helpful to you can't really see because my sketching is so bad but we need to have a recess within the recess and this is where the the shoulder attachment will go now I looked at using a few different methods for the shoulder I had two pistons in one design I had kind of a ball and socket on another design but all of the different designs I used had a, a little recess for for the kind of the bars to go into and for this version I'm going to use the uh, kind of a, a bar the shoulder will be made out of a bar with a ball on one end and the socket in the other but the socket will be within another recess so if I just come back into my side view I'm just going to enlarge this so I can see what I'm doing polygon mode again selection tool select those polys now these ones we don't need the bevel on that's okay or we don't need the, the the rounding on the edge which I will go back and add an extra layer of rounding to those in a minute so I'm just going to hit the D key actually I'm going to shift D I am going to bring that in just a touch and then the D key to bring that back I'm going to do that a couple of times and I'm happy with that okay so as I said I was going to just add some more smoothing to this so in edge mode I'm going to hit UL for loop selection and I'm going to select that loop there I'm also going to just flip around to the other side and do them both at once and then again so I know that they're both equal so shift select that loop and then I'm going to hit the V key go into structure bevel and I'm just going to smooth that one off like so and that just gives an extra an extra kind of loop of, of smoothing around there it's not really smoothing but it has the same effect okay so that's the basis of the body is now done one thing I'll do before I move on is add the seam and that's going to be done in a similar way to the head 
and I want to keep the size pretty similar to the head's seam as well. So what I need to do is choose a, a loop to bring in and to extrude inwards and I think the furthest edge out is most suitable because then you've got the widest part of the bottom half of the shell and the widest part of the top half of the shell all meeting together. And actually if I'm looking at this the widest point is quite possibly this edge loop rather than this polygon loop. So I think I'll use that edge loop. So back into edge mode, UL for loop selection, V key structure bevel and I'm just going to open that out to about there. I'm just going to go into my side view now just because I want to check how close that is. So that, let's just zoom in so we can see. Okay, I'm quite happy with that. I think that looks about right. Okay, so back into polygon mode, UL again, and select that new loop of polygons around the edge. Shift D to inner extrude, and we've got preserved groups, that's fine. And then I'm gonna go into my top view and just enter the scale tool, just bring them down just to touch. And that's just to give us a bit of a, a bevel there, just doing that one with uh, bringing in the scale of these polygons is quicker than doing two bevels on two edges. Okay, so D key into extrude and just bring in that seam. And again, having those bevels uh, on these edges or these extra edge loops just helps to kind of help sharpen up the shape if we do decide to smooth it off again. So space key to go back to our selection tool and we can have a look at this, just make sure it's gone all the way around. Should have done, there's no reason why not. And our body is looking uh, pretty good. It's getting there quite fast. This is actually slightly chunkier than my original version around the waist, but I think that would actually help. I think it, it sells better like that. Uh, there's not much in it. And if we look at the side view, we can see that the bottom half is definitely just a, a bit chunkier. Um, we could scale this down if we wanted. What we can do We'll do it a little bit just so I can show you how it works. Why not? I'm just going to hide that trackball a minute. I'm going to go into point mode and I want to find my center point, which is this one here. Choose your selection tool and you'll see here there's a, a, a section that says mode. Go to normal, soft selection, and you'll see that we've got kind of a yellow around that point which fades off back to, well, just back to our normal shape. Ah, and you can tell that. I've still got uh, selection through the uh, visible elements unchecked, so I'm just going to check that again and go back because I don't want to affect the top half of the model. Okay, so this is our soft selection, and what this is doing is basically this is creating a fall off. So where the yellow is strongest, the tools that we use will be affected most, and where it fades off, that's kind of the the fall off in between the two. And there are a few settings for this. You can have you can change your radius and Let's just give some room, more room and the strength. And there are different modes of doing it. Linear means that if you drew a line between the two parts, you've got 100%, naught percent And if you were to go halfway along, that would be kind of 50%, as you'd expect. And then dome has a slightly different shape. And you can see just by choosing the different modes how, how this is affecting the model. I'm going to use linear. And what I want to do is I'm going to increase the scale just a bit, that might be a bit too much. I want to affect more of the bottom than anything else. Choose my scale tool and then just drag this in. And you can see that's not quite really working. That's not quite what we wanted because it's it's leaving out some of these corners. And that's because if you were to look at this underneath, the corners are actually further away from that point than the, the center is. So I'm gonna undo that and I'm going to select some different points instead. Back to my selection tool. I do want the center, but I want that one and that one. That one and that one. And there you can see that the yellow is a bit more kind of prevalent around the corners as well now. So if I want to just do that, I can bring it in just a touch like so. Drop the selection. I quite like that actually. 
it's not what I was planning on but it works I think it looks quite good and you get to see another tool in use as well just a, another way of working okay so that's pretty good now the next thing I think we'll do is to add the flap on the back I'm just going to bring the trackball back have a quick gander around here let's just save incremental so we're now on version 12 if you've saved more versions along the way by the way it's not a problem uh, in fact it's probably better to have more versions than less okay so we'll select the body in polygon mode I'm going to choose a few polygons to work with here and I have got uh, visible elements which is what I want and I'm going to select a few across here and this selection oh, I don't want my soft selection on anymore so I'm just going to go back to normal that's okay that's what I want so I'm going to press ctrl C and ctrl V just to paste that UI to invert my selection backspace just to kill them and I'm going to rename that to flap I'm going to go back to the body and this selection is still there so I'm just going to hit you know what I, I could do this two ways we could either delete these and then create the geometry for the, the the hole behind the flap or we could just extrude these in so I think actually extruding them in might be a, a better use of our time so I'm just going to extrude them back you can see just once I'm going to hide the flap because it's getting in my way extrude back again and I'll go to about there and then in the side view I'll finish this off let's just enlarge this in our view grab the axis band and I'm going to bring this back to not quite halfway and what I'm doing is I'm just lining up the height so the gap here between the, the top of it and this loop here is about the same as this one um, I will go into my scale tool just stretch them up thereabouts it doesn't have to be exact that's fine and I just using the scale tool down the z-axis to flatten these off just a touch like so so they're pretty flat now it's looking pretty good happy with that I can drop the selection go back into this view and I think I will just go UL to select this loop around the inside I'm going to take my knife tool and I'm in loop and I want to select the loop around in here just to tighten that up in case we do the smoothing again the same as always okay so happy with that I'll just show you what I mean by this if I now take this body and put it into a hypernerbs you can see that this is keeping the shape pretty well it smoothed it off but uh, it's keeping kind of the, the hardness of that edge even though it's soft and smooth as it's doing pretty much everywhere um, you can see what's going on if I just undo and get rid of that knife cut like so and then add it to a hypernerbs it's not doing it quite as much as we wanted I and mean, there is a, an edge there but it's not tight and it's kind of kind of harsh so let's just undo that again go back in here select the edge and that's just so you know why I was doing what I was doing so add that cut okay okay so now we need to go back and adjust the flap so we've got this flap object and I want to just go to V selection and I want to select all all those polygons I'm going to hit the D key extrude them out and now I'm going to hit the V key go to bevel I'm just going to hit S to bring this up to full full viewability in our in our viewport and I'm going to add a bevel preserve groups is kept on so this will treat this all as one massive polygon instead of lots of little ones and just bring this in again I'll just show you what I mean by that I'll uncheck preserve groups and then if I bevel it they all go out separately which really don't want not in this case anyway so I'm just gonna add a bit of bevel to there okay so our lid is now pretty much done all I need to do is just add some hinges if you want to that is you don't have to add hinges to it and um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use uh, the cylinder object now I want this to be along the x-axis like so and I want to bring it down and back it's probably easier to do this in the side view 
and what I want is for the center I'm just going to reduce the radius I want the center of this to be I'm going to put it to about here uh, a little bit higher up but not so high that it intersects that, that edge there I think we'll go to about there and I'm going to make two of these I'm just going to make one first of all and then duplicate it rotational segments 24 is fine don't need 36 for that okay so we've got this here and you can see what we're doing we're just going to add this and shrink it down let's shrink it down to five that's about right and we'll do the rest in the front view just lining these up so at the moment this is directly on the y-axis so what I need to do, I can do is just line one up over here about there if I go into object mode here I can see how far down the x-axis that has gone and that's minus 58 so I can just type in minus 60 just to round it up and that's fine and then if I actually before I continue and just duplicate this I'm going to round off the edges by going to caps fillet and just three steps for this it doesn't need to be massive and I'll just take this down to 0.75 for the radius for this this smoothing back into my front view what did I say minus 60 so I'll control click and drag and in the coordinates here all I need to do is because I know that everything started on the y-axis there exactly I can just get rid of that minus sign hit that and it will make it 60 so they are perfectly symmetrical and both are lined up as they should be so I'm just going to call this I'm just going to double click call this hinge and that's the left one so hinge underscore L hit the up arrow and then we can press, type in hinge underscore R for the right one and what I want to do is actually I want to make all of these into one group because the flap will go with the hinges and the hinges will obviously go next like together they'll rotate in the same direction together so I've just selected all three, hold down the option key, hit G, and I've got a null object. So I'm going to call this, uh, let's call this rear flap, like so. And now in the side view, and this is kind of more important when we get to actually doing any animating, so it's always worth setting up now. I've got the null object, which houses everything. I've got that just kind of selected here and I want to choose this second option which is the object axis tool and I want to put the axis and this is the center of rotation right to the middle of the the hinge so that the hinge will rotate around that axis so that's about there now we can test this out just by coming into our perspective view go into the normal object mode hit the R key to rotate and then you can just you can see that's flipping around exactly how we want it to and because we took these polygons for the actual flat door because we took them from the model we know that it's not going to be intersecting weirdly uh, we know that that's going to be going back into the recess as it should and you can see the same down the bottom like so okay so that's looking pretty good let's just undo those rotations and save incremental So the next thing I want to do, and something I didn't do in my original model, is to create just a, a very simple ring around the trackball. Uh, I always felt that even though it was never really going to be seen, uh, it seemed a bit odd just having this ball hovering. Now I could go right into the, 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 the process and indent it in so that the ball is actually sitting in a, a semicircular recess, but that's really not necessary, that's just going a bit too overkill. And to do this I'm going to use a tube and just go into my side view so I can see what I'm doing, see where my, my tube is uh, hit the E key and I'm just going to bring this down now I think this was down 200 so if I just type in minus 200 that should be level with it which it is okay so I'm happy with that now I'm just going to grab this tube and bring it to about so I'm quite happy with that and I'm going to do the rest in my perspective view and all I'm doing here is grabbing the orange handle you could type this over you could 
select the tube here and in the attributes you could type in the radius uh, I'm just going to wing it by eye here and I want it to be just slightly bigger than the ball which is fine and then for the outer radius I'll just do that first of all there and then I can adjust it here like so and I'm pretty happy with that uh, I think what I might do is just uh, add a fillet to the, the top here and again eight segments is far too much in fact three is probably too much let's just go to 0.6 for the radius and that's looking pretty good okay I'm happy with that that's uh, all I really needed to do so I'm just going to call this uh, what should we call this trackball ring yeah, that's probably a good name for it yeah I'm happy with that one okay so what I need to do is I'm just going to bring the head out of the way and I'm going to you can see my controls have popped up there I'm just going to select everything which is related to the body so far and I'm going to just group them again under a null so option G makes everything a child of a null that it creates for you and I'm going to rename this to body so although there's two objects now called body one is a null and one is the actual model of the body but that's fine uh, it would just help us when we start animating and it will help us just to keep the scene organized and a bit more controlled okay so what have we got now we've got our head we've got our body the head is now finished apart from just adding in any socket we need in here for the neck that the head is now pretty much done we've got our aerial and we can stretch that out we've got the the position for the the flap for or the panel there for the aerial to pop out of we've got our body we've got the eye done the rings for around the eye we've got our recesses for the arms uh, we've got our flap on the back we've got our trackball and the ring that it sits in and we want to move on next to just creating the flap on the chest so we've done something similar to the first stage before on top of the head but let's just bring the body underneath the head open it up and select the body object in polygon mode I'm going to choose where I want this flap to be and I want it to be reasonably large so selection tool polygon mode I'm going to select these polygons here you choose whichever ones you want but I mean, I would suggest making it reasonably large just so it, it kind of shows off better uh, so I'm going to cut and paste those so command C command V I want to invert that selection so U I backspace just delete those uh, although you will find that if I go into point mode I just need to optimize that that's the V key functions optimize default settings is fine that's just removes all those extraneous points because we won't be needing those I'm going to call this one uh, the, the heart door go back to my body object polygon mode you'll see those polygons are still there so I just delete those uh, I'll also just optimize those as well just to get rid of the polygons in the middle okay so let's go back to the heart door into the side view and I want to take my axis tool you can see that the the bounding box of that object is now kind of showing up with the, the orange border and I want to move the axis point right to the front bottom similar to the, what we did for the top of the head so I'm going to bring that to there and there let's just make sure it's getting really close that's like that okay so back to the object hit S to fill the viewport with that one object I'm going to go into my perspective view now and work on the next part and to do this what I'm going to use is actually a bend deformer so I'm going to add a bend deformer to the scene and I'm just going to up the strength so I can see what I'm doing and I can see straight away this is wrong because what, what I want to happen is that when this bend deformer is animated I want this chest part the panel that we've just made to kind of peel away forwards and downwards so I want to take the deformer and I want to rotate it 90 degrees round like so and I'm going to add it as a child of the heart door which you can see now is kind of lifting off and it is deforming it's not really doing what we want it to but it will so let's work in our side view take the bend deformer and it, at the moment it's far too big 
so I'm going to reduce the size down to there and what I'm doing is I'm just stopping tiny bit short of where the bottom of the the object is the flap object the, the heart door uh, I can probably go down a little bit more let's just find out let's choose that so it's this it's parallel to this this edge here so I need to actually go slightly taller or slightly lower to about there I'm also going to reduce the z-axis or the, the size in the X and the Z it doesn't need to be all that big let's go into my front view just make sure it's wide enough to cover the panel but not too big just to control our scene a bit better now back in our perspective view let's see what's going on okay so let's select our bend form I'll go back into the strength and you can see what's happening here I want to let's just set this to zero so at zero this is fine this is exactly what we want and in fact the deformer is back kind of halfway along the body which we don't want we want this to be lined up with the front of our panel so we'll put the center of it about so just so it's kind of the the, the panel the door of the heart is going through the center of it and we'll try again so select it there and in the attributes we'll just up the strength and that's almost doing what we want you can see how it's working you can see what's going on let's go into this view and ignore the jaggedness of that at the moment but it's it's doing what we want um, we can press here there's a, an option that says keep y-axis length and what that does is just make sure that if you were to measure out each polygon they'll keep the same length as they were up against the chest okay so I'm going to increase the strength of this and you can go past 360 degrees um, we can take it right back to somewhere like this and you can see we're going to have to do some fixing here and we're going to have to add some internals to the body uh, but that's actually doing quite well so I'm just going to turn it off for a second I'm going to select the heart door and I'm just going to add some divisions to this to help smooth it off now I could add it to a subdivision object uh, or I can use the knife tool in polygon mode and just make some cuts across like this and I'm only doing this across the x-axis I don't need to go up and down because it's not going to be deformed uh, along that axis there at all I get to go back to my selection tool turn on the deformer again select it and you can see now that's a little bit smoother if I want it smoother again I can make some more cuts but let's just set that back to zero and I think like we did with the, the the controls on the head for the aerial socket I think it's probably worth just going into our bend form here and in the strength mode let's just right click and I'm just scrolling down to where it says add to HUD I know you can't see it in this video but it's third from the bottom so add to HUD I'm just going to control drag that to the bottom right and I'm going to call I'm going to rename the bend here to heart opener heart underscore opener like that and that just means that the, the, the name shows here as well so I'm just going to put this into the right place uh, I'm going to right click it and press show when parent active I'm also going to right click it again display icon and right click again and display icon size I'm just choosing medium it just makes it easier for me to grab and then I can just slide that from here okay so let's just set this I can double click in there and type zero I'm also now going to save incremental just once more and the heart door is now done what I need to do is just drag that heart door object into the body so that when I move the body around that door goes with it and the next stage is to create the indent and the interior now I'm actually going to do this in two parts I'm going to create just the basic shell inside now in this video and in the following video we'll create the heart and the heart is actually kind of a, a, a power cell or battery or whatever held in a couple of clamps and um, we can make some interesting shapes with that okay so to create the inside we need to hide this door so the heart door here let's just 
double click on that traffic light there to hide it from the renderer or from the editor and you can see what we've got going on we've got the insides here we've got the box down there for our rear compartment we've got the indents for the the arms and the arm sockets uh, we haven't got an indent at the top yet I'm actually going to leave that until we start on the neck just so we can get in the right place we'll build the neck and then add the recess so let's go into edge mode select our body this body not the null I'm just going to drop that selection that was remaining from before and I'm going to hit the V key into selection and we're going to choose outline selection because we want this outline here okay so let's shift D to use our extrude tool or the D key sorry to use our extrude tool and I want to bring this inwards just a bit I'm going to add some thickness to the door afterwards so I want to just do this first I'm going to go into my side view just hit S to bring this up and I'm going to move this back and in just a touch and that gives us our softness or our roundness for the for the for the kind of like a bevel and I'm going to go back into my perspective viewport and I'm going to do this again bring this in in fact I'm just going to undo that I'm just going to click once to add it but not give it any kind of depth I don't want to make this hole any smaller and again in the side view I'm just going to shrink the this view out a little bit I'm going to drop that tool grab my axis band and I'm going to bring this to let's say about there our tool for rotate I'm just going to flop this up to a, about level I know it's curved so we're not going to get it completely level but now I'm going to use the T key for just to scale that back flat and also because I rotated it and that edge selection or that, pan, that polygon selection along there is actually taller than the hole now we've rotated it I'm just going to bring it down to so and then if we go back into our perspective view you can see what we've got now we've got the kind of depth that we want possibly a little bit further back actually let's just drag that back let's see how far we can go let's go to we don't want it to intersect for the arms or the shoulders so let's go to there yeah that's looking pretty good and if I hit the V key go to uh, structure and close polygon hole now this will select automatically or make me a proxy while I'm close to an edge and I'm happy with that so that's good now I'm just going to enlarge this so I can see what I'm doing I just need to make this into quads which means doing what we did in one of the previous videos which is using the K to select our knife in the mode we want to use line I want to go from point to point across there point to point and point to point and I'm going to go the same from the bottom to the top or the top to the bottom like so and you can see that that's done nothing and that's because I've got an edge selection there and I want to be in polygon mode I want to be using this polygon so excuse me for that slip up but if you're wondering why that doesn't always work that it might just be that you're either in the wrong mode or you've got something selected that you're not looking at and you might have let's go back into the knife tool you might have restrictor selection on uh, and if you have that it will only affect a polygon or an edge that you've got selected okay so let's just try that again you can see the new edge there as I create it and same just from there to there point to point and point to point that's done now so it's still in polygon mode just drop that tool UL for loop selection and as before just back into the knife tool and I want to choose loop I'm just going to add a loop at the back and I'm going to add a loop just at the front just in case we need it later on so I'm going to add that quite close like so and now we have the box ready for the heart to get put into and that will go in the next video so I can unhide the heart door if I just deselect all the objects here you can see there's extra polygons you can see those are the ones that are going to be the heart or the door to the heart and if I select the body my control comes back and I can open the door so let's just reset this to zero and give this a bit of thickness so the heart door is this object 
I don't need to drop it down because I know that's just the deformer in there. So I'm going to go V, selection, select all. Now, you can see that the normals of these polygons are facing outwards. So if I was to extrude them now, take my extrude tool and drag to the right, they're all coming out and I want them to be level. So I'm going to drag them back and you can see that the existing or the original polygons are, have disappeared. And what I want to do is just press create caps to bring them back. I'm going to drop the tool. Oops. I'm going to drop the tool and hide the body just so that I can see what I'm doing because I want to make sure that there are normals facing in all the right directions. So if I just select one or a number, I want to be able to see if the normals go in the right way. And I don't think it is because I can only see points here. I can't see lines coming out of them. So I'm going to go into my side view and you can see that actually these polygons here, because of the way the extrusion worked, they're all facing forward still and I want them to be facing out. So I'm going to go back into my perspective view and I'm just going to select all of these back polygons like so. And there's a simple tool. You can just go to functions, reverse normals, and now they're facing back. And just to check while I'm here, let's make sure that the edge ones are facing the right way and it doesn't look like they are. And I can check that by going into this view and you can see they're facing inwards and that's not good. We don't want that at all. So I'm going to UL, loop select, V key, functions, reverse normals. And there we go. They're all facing the right way. Now I'm not going to add a bevel to this, the same as before. I don't really need it. Uh, and that will just kind of help it to sit flush with the front of the body, which I will now bring back. Drop everything. Have a look over, make sure there's nothing we want to change. I'm really liking this kind of slightly curved shape to the bottom. I think that works quite well. Okay, so what's left to do now on the body? Actually, not a lot. I was toying with the idea of having a panel in here because I wanted to possibly give him like a... I originally thought a jetpack which could kind of extend out of a panel here, maybe two doors just kind of flap open and a little rocket pops out. Uh, and then I thought actually it might be more fun and more suitable to the character if he'd kind of gotten himself some kind of a parachute. And I was thinking of using like a, a golfing umbrella with a nice looped handle that came out on a, a an attachment of some kind. Um, so feel free to, to do that. You can do the doors in the same method as the front of the chest or the top of the head. Um, but uh, what I actually chose to do, I'll leave as a bit of a surprise because uh, when the short comes out that features this little robot, uh, you'll see a few different things in there. Um, but go wild. I mean, you can add panels, all sorts of things all over the place to, to make them quite funky and fun and individual. And I would stress that most of all. Uh, if you've got some fun ideas, then use them. There's absolutely no reason you have to copy this step by step. Just use these tools to do something cool of your own. Um, but if you do, I'd love to see them. I really would. Uh, I spend a lot of parts of my day looking for inspiration and just checking out what people are doing. So email it across to me if you if you do something or just send me a link. Anyway, that's enough chat. Let's get back into the modelling and see what we have to do next. I am just going to take the uh, the fong tag from this body and just reduce that down so we don't get so many artifacts. Like so just deselecting now you see it's all flat against each other that's good okay so as i said i'm not going to do the socket for the neck now i'll do that when i do the neck video we've got our panel at the back we've got our panel at the front for the heart we've got arm recesses we've got the ring and the trackball all done and i'll see you in the next video when we actually build the heart